Hey. Hey, you. All right, listen. Listen to me. You want to be a driver? You want to be a package handler? You want to be a... You want to be a big man? Listen to me. I got a couple of few things I want to talk to you about. All right? You work for FedEx? All right? You got to be tough. You got to be fucking brave. All right? You got to... You got to... You have to cut corners where you can because everything sort of gets shitty from time to time. But here's the deal. All right? You want swag? You talk to your manager. All right? You say, hey, look. I'm not looking so great. I'm coming in with a raggedy ass shirt. I need some merch. I need some stuff. You got a cool hat. You got a fucking hat, right? You get your jacket, your 1975 FedEx Stan Herman jacket. You got a t-shirt, whatever you need. You want a keychain? I'll give you a fucking keychain. Look, I got two of them. I got two. Do you smoke? Listen. Smoking's whack, man. Smoking's bad. Not really, though. If I... Uh, so, a few tips, like... Uh, you gotta get to know the people that you're working with. If... And it depends. Uh, if, if you work at FedEx Express, it's no thing to go out and have a cigarette. If there's nothing going on... Pff, right, you know, you gauge it. They trust you. FedEx Ground, it's a little different. I mean, they may trust you, but... You, you gotta like, they, they have, a, they have a very, very strict no smoking policy. Obviously, uh, it's a non-smoking facility. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find like, people used to smoke in restaurants, but not here. Right? No fucking way. Down south, it's, it's still kind of common, I think, because, uh, well, this was, this was 12 years ago, actually, that when it was. I, it was phasing out. Uh, we went down to Tennessee, me and some friends, and like we were actually able to eat at a Chili's, um, and then just like light up after we ate. We just light up cigarettes, and we could just smoke in the restaurant right at the at the booth. Um, but yeah, so obviously, almost any place you work is a non-smoking facility. However, you could always go outside and smoke. They have a very strict policy at FedEx Ground that you can't smoke. Uh, they don't want you going up for smoke breaks because the conveyor belt doesn't stop. So, obviously, if you leave your team, they call it work abandonment. And I understand, because what's going through their head is it's going to fuck everything up. But what's going through your head is, oh, I, I found a way to do this. Well, here's how you do it. You talk to people that you work with on your belt. Um, you never ask a manager if you can go out and have a cigarette. Um, at the very least, you, you, you come up with something. If you're going to say something to a manager because you just want it locked in place, like, you, you just want to make sure you don't get in trouble, say like, oh, I have to go, um, take my medication. There's, you know, there's a million different things you could say. I have to make a phone, an emergency phone call, this and this is going on. Um, and I'm not advocating lying, but if people who smoke, I mean, yeah, after like four and a half hours of doing that shit, you, you start fucking hankering for, a, you know, a cigarette. Um, and it's hard to go, like, yesterday I went like seven hours without a cigarette. And by the time I got out of there, I smoked like half a pack. And, well, not really, I'm exaggerating, but I was just sitting in my car for like a half hour. I was like, you know, you get beat. You know, it, and it's funny because if they let you have a cigarette, then they, they see the work that comes out of that. Like, then you come back in and you're, like, ready to go. And, um, I don't know. For whatever reason, they're just so anal about it. And the manager that used to run the building uh, that we used to have before I got fired last, um, she, was a, she was an absolute cunt. She was just... She parked right behind me one morning, and it was we were dry. We ran dry. If you don't know what that means in the logistics industry, um, it means that there's nothing to do. Like, we, there's no package. We're waiting for, for more freight to arrive. So, 
you know, they tell you like, well, we're not paying you to take cigarette breaks or we're paying you to work. Well, if you're paying us to stand around too, then what's the difference if I go have a cigarette? So, but she was an absolute, she parked behind me. I was in my car having a cigarette. There were no problems with anybody else, but because she was so anal about it, um, she walks in and then I go, fuck, I'm saying she's going to be standing there waiting for me. And, um, just by chance, I walked in at the wrong time and she was walking right by the entrance door and she goes, Oh, good morning. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? I get written up for it. Yeah. Fucking bitch. But anyway, yeah, you communicate with, with the people that you work with, say like two or three people smoke, uh, on the belt that you're on. You talk to them, you take turns, maybe, uh, you know, play rock, paper, scissors to see who gets to go first or whatever. I always go last because I, it's, I don't give a fuck. As long as I get to go at some point, I don't care. And, um, yeah, the smartest thing to do, if, if you're not going to like literally ask to go out there, uh, for some reason, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta change my, uh, or like put on my, uh, ankle or what knee knee brace or whatever so you know whatever the fuck it is you could come up with a million different excuses um the smartest thing to do if you're gonna if you're gonna do it like incognito is so you say I gotta, I gotta go take a shit all right sorry for the language but uh i gotta go take a shit so you walk toward the bathroom right and if they know you smoke and if you smoke, you smell like smoke. Uh, it's on you. It doesn't matter how many times you wash your clothes. You smell like smoke. That's just how it is. You walk toward the bathroom. And then you go into the bathroom. Because they're going to be watching you. To see if you're headed for the exit door. Uh, go in the bathroom. Wait like two, three seconds. Come right out and go to the exit door to go out. Because then they'll be like, oh, they actually went to the bathroom. And then if you say you're taking a shit, you know, that, that entails that maybe... You're going to be there for like a few minutes. So then you go out, you have a quick smoke and come back in. That's it. So people go out like five times a night. I don't, one time, that's all I need. And halfway through the shift, all right. Sometimes they even push it up. I'm like, you know what, John, you can wait a little bit. Just wait a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And then sometimes you get that glorious, nice, slow cigarette at like 6.30 a.m. You come back and there's not that much left to do. So you had your, your nice little smoke break, and then you, you don't really have a lot sitting on your shoulders after that. But just a little tip, because uh, they get real fucking pissed if you try to go out and have a cigarette. And, uh, excuse me a second. Yeah, they also get pissed if you show up fucked up. I mean, one of my managers, like back in the day, said, whatever gets you through the night, you know, as long as you're not a liability, as long as you work hard, you get the shit done, and, you know, the operation is complete, who the fuck cares? I go in there and everybody smells alcohol on my breath. But am I drunk? Am I stumbling over shit? I mean, no, I'm not. I don't get, like, I don't even get, like, even in my free time, I don't get drunk anymore. It's like a medical thing. I have to, like, keep it in my system. It fucking sucks. Or else I start retching. I'm like, 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 I haven't eaten for, like, 12 hours, and I'm just, like, my body's trying to make me throw up. And <laughs> because it's not getting what it's used to getting. And I'm, you know, I'll just be like, blah, 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 and like, nothing's coming out, obviously. The first two weeks when I came back, I was just like in the bathroom, all throwing up and shit. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, no. And then, you know, you get used to it. I mean, you don't do anything for like three and a half fucking months. When I mean, you spend the whole summer just like lying in your boxers in bed under an air conditioner unit, uh, doing nothing because you got money to sit on. Um. Yeah, your, your body kind of gives up on you. 
But yeah, just a tip about smoking. Just thinking about that because, I don't know. I think about work a lot when I'm not at work. In fact, I think I think about work more outside of work than I do at work. When I'm at work, I'm just like, oh, this will be over soon. It'll be over soon. And then when I get home, like, once you get that release, you're like, all right, I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to have a smoke. Sit on my porch. Then, and then I start feeling like, oh, well, I'd go back right now. Let me work another shift. I mean, like, even right now, I feel like, like, if I wanted to, I could call them right now and see if I could go in tonight. And then I'd be fucked tomorrow morning because to, to, the mornings are what I'm, you know, that's my obligation. But if I wanted to pick up extra hours, it's just that once I make that call, then I'm going to be like, oh, man, now I got to wait till five o'clock. And, and then by the time five o'clock rolls around, I'm just like beat already from like not doing anything. And uh, it's just a weird fucking cycle that doesn't make any sense. We had a um, we had a referral program, and I guess it's still on. Um, if you get someone to work there, uh, they give you like two hundred bucks or something if the person lasts forty five days. So that people have been jumping all over that. I tried to. I, there were two guys across the street who were out of work. They were like a couple of years older than I am, and uh, they were fixing up a camper to move out, and they eventually did that. You know. 60 bucks later, after I gave one of them, you know, 60 bucks to get me something, and, uh, poof, he's, he's just gone. Oh, I thought you were a nice guy. Jeez, I trusted you. Uh, I tend to do that too much. I trust people too much. Sort of sucks. Man, I'm back, uh, back working at FedEx, uh, crushing, like, close to 50 hours a week. I mean, they're just throwing money at us. Just, yeah, come in, yeah, come in and help out. Today we did 21,000 pieces. Yesterday we had two fucking full uh, 53 footers that were full of ICs. ICs, uh, terminology. Um, they're Packages that are like, you know, furniture, anything that weighs like 100 pounds, stuff they can't put on the conveyor belt. Um, and that just, that'll kill you. There, there are some guys who just only do ICs in the unload. It's beyond me. I don't know how the, how much are you getting paid? I mean, are you getting paid a little extra that we don't know about? <laughs> Is that a position I should look into? <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. I mean, I got one piece of furniture. I fucking taking it off the belt, slide it down, and slam it with my boot, turn it over like that against the truck. There you go. Wham, bam. Thank you, man. I'm not touching that again. The, the next person who touches that package is the driver when he loads it in his truck. But is there any place I'd rather be? No, not at all. Not UPS for sure. That was a nightmare. Seven months of my life that I'll never get back. I used to, I used to have nightmares about working there. And I'd be like, all right, I'm getting it done. I'm like, we're like halfway done. And then I'd wake up to my alarm and I'd be like, oh, fuck. Now I have to actually go do it. And it, that's just, that's no way to live. You're getting paid 11 bucks an hour for that shit. And they kill you. No, it's ridiculous. You gotta work there like 10 years before you actually make any real money. And, I don't know. FedEx has all this cool gear. You, you can rep FedEx. If you're part of a cool gang or some shit. I don't know. It, we all bump fists. It's like, What's up, man? It, it's a good work environment. Everybody's happy. For the most part. You'll hear the F-bomb floating around all night. Yeah, what's that? What's that belt where? Uh, what's that belt that I hear yelling from every day? Oh, that's that's us. That's belt three. <laughs> yep. Because you get like all the. You got most of the talent. Uh, well, I don't want to put it that way because there's talent on every belt. It's talent all throughout the building, but. You get like a bunch of the the best people on that belt. 
and uh we're also all like sort of assholes in a way and it's i don't, i love it because we're all just like fuck this fuck that but get like mountains of freight coming down the belt and 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 today this other manager came over and he's cool but he like he comes over and like the whole management he used to work with us and then the whole management thing went straight to his head so now he's got an, uh, this inflated ego about being a manager he's like yep i'm gonna make some changes around here i'm gonna move some of these people around and we're looking at each other like no we're 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 staying right here we're all a team like we're the best team in the building we're staying right here you're not moving anybody it sucks i hate all the like the politics and shit but you just gotta go one day at a time and like fight to keep what good things you have it's a good job and they're very forgiving too if you if you have to leave for a while or something you can come back and um you, if you were maxed out when you left you, and you come back, you can make the same amount. But you're already maxed out. So that's pretty cool. They got good insurance. I don't know why I'm going on about this. I, don't know, I just want to do like a FedEx thing. I'm so happy that I'm working there again. This is like, this is round three. Oh, and I, uh, I cut open my uh, first five minutes today. I had one of those boxes with staples on it. One of the staples was loose. Ripped open my fucking, my good, this is my good finger, too. <laughs> I ripped it, this is the finger I talk with. And uh, I ripped it open, there's blood all over my hand, all over my glove. I'm like, I didn't even notice at the time. And then like, I, at one point I looked down at my hand, and I'm like, oh. I, I did like a Scooby-Doo, like, Whoa! like, so I went to the, the Synthes cabinet and fucking grab some band-aids. It's brutal shit. It's brutal work. But it's uh, it's worth it. And it's what I like to do. My brother was telling me, Oh, John, you know, I mean, you're going to get tired of that at some point. You're going to you're gonna want to find something else to do that's a little more relaxing. What am I gonna do? Work at a call center, work at McDonald's, work at I didn't go to college. But this is this is the best line of work you can be in, really, if you didn't go to college. Unless you unless you like have a startup company or something. I I'm not capable of doing anything like that either. But uh Yeah. We all find some way to exist. Make money. I'm sitting on two checks right now, I haven't even cashed. I got Benjamins. I got Benjamins. Who's that ugly man? Yeah, well, you know, that's that's a fucking poor working class man bragging that he has a couple hundred dollar bills in his wallet. I'll probably never have enough money to do anything with my life, but I don't really give a fuck. One day at a time, just uh, exist and have fun while we can. <laughs> 